Greetings. We're here at Lowell Telecommunications Corporation studio for an episode of Threads, a Lowell conversation. My name is Stacy Hargis. I will be the guest host this morning, and I will have the pleasure of interviewing our current city manager for the next couple days, Bernie Lynch and Mimi Persagian, and we're also joined by Joe Smith. This morning, I'd like to uh, focus on the wonderful history that we have with uh, Bernie Lynch as our city manager. He served the city for over seven and a half years. So we're going to be reflecting on all those accomplishments that came out and also looking to the future and what Lowell can expect over the next couple years. Um, Bernie, I think over your seven and a half years that you've been uh, serving Lowell, uh, many wonderful accomplishments have happened, and I think we can summarize them in a few different areas, obviously economic development, public safety, infrastructure, um, also a great focus on neighborhoods and making sure there's the connection between um, the people on the streets, connecting with their neighborhood organizations, but also being able to uh, connect with the government. Um, on your day that you were sort of given, sworn in, I guess, mm -hmm. as a city manager, you said a great quote that I thought really um, exemplifies the way you ran your, your management of the city. And you talked about how the government is a city, as a city, is the business of the people. Mm -hmm. And I really think that you obviously, in many years you were here, really showed that. So maybe you can talk about um, how you came to Lowell and why you sort of wanted the job of city manager. What was it about Lowell that really appealed to you? Well, if we, if we only have an hour, I don't know if I can go <laughs> through all of that. But, uh, but thank you. I do, I do uh, look upon what I do, what a manager does, is running a business. I, I do think it's a, a, you know, and by that I don't mean you're kind of trying to make profits or uh, you're supposed to act in a way that is, um, you know, impersonal and, uh, you know, always focused on the bottom line. But I think it's really reflective of a, a, an approach that, uh, you treat the, the operation in a way that you're looking for the most efficiencies and effectiveness uh, to serve the people uh, in the best way possible. Because it is their city and it is, uh, you know, important that we uh, protect their assets, their, uh, uh, the money they give us, uh, in, in the, you know, for the benefit of everyone, uh, not just for a, a favored few. Uh, and so, and that we have a long-term perspective and it isn't just a short-term sort of political perspective. but. Uh, my story really is is one of, uh, I came to the city of Lowell, really I I'd, I'd visited the city of Lowell back in the 1960s when my brother was a, a student at Lowell Tech. Uh, didn't really know much about the city at the time. I grew up in Ashland, a small town outside Framingham. Uh, and, you know, Lowell was coming into the, you know, sort of the, the city uh, for me. Certainly I'd been to Boston as a kid and all, but Lowell was a, another type of city for me. Um, I ended up uh, coming to Lowell, though, as myself as a student, uh, at Lowell State College and then it became the University of Lowell at a time that the city was really experiencing some tough times. It had one of the highest un unemployment rates in the country, uh, burnt out mill buildings, boarded up mill buildings. It was really a city that was down on its luck. Um, and, but it was during that period of time that I really began to see the transformation taking place here uh, in the city and, and I, was, I was fascinated by it and fascinated by the the notion of a, uh, you know, the historic preservation and embracing diversity, and uh, it, it, it really made me think that my interest in government should go to municipal uh, government and uh, urban issues as opposed to the national issues I've been focused on as a, uh, going into college. And then um, I, I was a big cheerleader for the city. I'd always bring people up to the city to uh, see what we had. But um, I left, planning to always be able to come back and visit. Uh, and lo and behold, I ended up back in this area as a town manager, ultimately town manager in Chelmsford. Uh, and then when the city manager's job opened up, I felt, you know, I'll put in for it. Truthfully, not expecting to receive the position, but uh, Lowell had meant so much to me that I wanted to uh, see about uh, the opportunity to come and be the manager here. And uh, it's been a great seven and a half years, and, uh, you know, I've been uh, able to get involved in so many different issues and projects here um, that it's, um, it, I think it's a great sort of, end to my career as a municipal mm -hmm. manager. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, you and I have had this discussion of, in the seven and a half years you've been here, then one of the areas that I uh, I've publicly talk to you about is the makeup of the boards. Mm -hmm. I've always felt that the board should, should really reflect the city. Right. And uh, your administration has done some of that with, with the council's approval, but can you reflect on uh, when you came on in the 
uh, what the boards were like, and uh, how satisfied are you that you, you've reshaped that or you made it more inclusive? Well, I, I'm very proud of that we have um, reached out and brought new people into the boards and commissions. Uh, I think there's a lot more work to be done in terms of uh, having greater diversity, um, ethnic diversity uh, on the boards. But I think in terms of uh, gender diversity, we've done much better. Uh, we have more women serving now. Uh, but also I think that, it, and it's tougher to uh, sort of describe, but uh, the people that I've been able to put on the boards uh, come from all different neighborhoods, uh, all different backgrounds. They're not people that have um, been part of the political mm -hmm. structure of the city in the past. Uh, you know, I, I put people on boards, you know, like the Conservation Commission. I look for people that were engineers. Uh, I look for people that were uh, environmentalists to put on the, that board. Uh, likewise, on the uh, um, planning board, I look for more neighborhood representation. Uh, same with the Board of Appeals. I, when I came on, we had, um, we had builders on the boards. We had, uh, and I, I think it's good to have a builder on the board, but I don't think it should be all builders. I certainly don't think there was one particular developer who had seats. He, he or his, he was on a, a board. Uh, his employees were on the same board and some of the other boards that were, you know, representing really one developer interest. And, uh, I, I, you know, I think we, need to, we needed to spread that out and have more neighborhood people more people with uh, professional backgrounds, more people with different life experiences, and um, I'm very pleased with that, but there's much more work to be done in terms of the ethnic diversity of our, mm -hmm. of our boards. And that's definitely one, I, I would say, one of your accomplishments was being able to really get your staff more in the neighborhoods, listening to the concerns mm -hmm. of citizens, for, the, for them to even be finding out who should be bringing up, kind of getting involved, and I think that's been very tremendous. Um, also, I think another major accomplishment is our finances. Mm -hmm. Just recently, we were uh, upgraded to double A minus, I right. guess, bond rating, which is quite significant. Mm -hmm. um, so tell us a little bit about how you got us to that place in, in with your your team as well. Sure. Well, I had a great finance team. I had, uh, you know, Tom Moses is the CFO. I, I recruited Tom to come serve the city uh, and work with me back uh, almost a month or two after I became manager. Uh, I uh, discovered once I came on that there were some major financial issues facing the city. Uh, the Department of Revenue had us on a watch list. We'd been recently been downgraded right before I came on uh, in our bond rating. Uh, the budget for that year was uh, was problematic, um, and I reached out to people in the municipal finance world that uh, that I knew, and I said, you know, I'm looking for someone, and uh, any suggestions? And uh, I was pointed towards Tom, who interestingly had applied yeah. for the manager's job. Like a team arrival. It was a team. <laughs> it yeah. was, and for a period of time there, I had uh, another uh, name that had been floated. Uh, just staying out for the second was Matt Coggins. His name had been floated for. Uh, city manager, and he he was my development director, and he was you know again this this great resource that I had, but uh, but Tom as Tom came on, we met on a Wednesday night at uh, six o'clock in my office. We spent two to three hours just talking about government, and municipal finance, and uh, our philosophies, and they they jived, and um, so I brought him on, and uh, you know we looked at you know, putting in place conservative budgeting practices uh, that there should be uh, plan, that, you know, you should use financial forecasting as a means of knowing where you are going, uh, that you should look for efficiencies and ways to save money, uh, but also ways to make money. So for instance, uh, the tow contracts, we put those out to bid and we got started making $250,000 a year on tow contracts. Not a lot, but it's, it's, it's something. Uh, you know, we, we redu reduced costs by eliminating health insurance for boards and commissions that's frankly illegal. We looked at making changes in health insurance to, for our employees and our retirees, and that went through a number of different um, um, stages, but we, we made substantial savings there. Energy savings that we could make mm -hmm. by investing in our buildings and our uh, facilities. Uh, we looked at, uh, you know, doing things that were going to be good, as I said, in the long-term picture of the city. Setting aside reserves, uh, that uh, was crucial. That's crucial to the bond rating agencies that you have something to fall back on. Uh, and all told, if you look at our total fiscal flexibility, uh, back in uh, 2006, we had five, we were five million dollars under the levy limit, uh, prop two and a half levy limit, and we had uh, four million dollars that had been set aside by the state back in um, 1993 um, for emergencies, and that was it. 
If you look at our reserves now, our, in terms of our total fiscal flexibility, we're up about $39 million between uh, excess levy capacity. It's grown from five to 12 million. We have the $4 million, plus we have another $10 million of other reserves. Uh, and we also have uh, about $8 million set aside for uh, the uh, uh, post-employment benefits, retiree health benefits. The, the bond rating agencies like seeing that you're planning ahead and you're setting aside, you're being conservative. But so we, we, we did things like that to save money, budget properly, um, and I think sort of set this, the city in the right direction. Bernie, um, one of the things I feel some people give you is a backhanded compliment that mm -hmm. you are good with the numbers. Right. But I think what you have to do is look deeper than that and the work that went into getting those numbers, right. like you've mm -hmm. become kind of a green community. Mm -hmm. Look at the number of things that you've accomplished in the city along the category of green community to save money. You know, the energy performance contract, the solar, right. uh, the aggregate of electricity cost, saving not the cities, but the people of the city money. Um, and also in hiring um, people like Tom Moses and Adam Bakey, um, the decision to do that was the right decision. It wasn't that you were left with people that were good, right. you actually went and got them. Yeah, we got we did, and, and I, you know, I spoke of Tom as, as one that I went out and found and got and brought in, and um, Adam was here, and you know, some decision had to be reached with what to promote him up, and that was a no-brainer for me, because mm -hmm. I worked closely with Adam on the Hamilton Canal project and some other projects when he was a deputy director of DPD. But uh, again, another extremely bright individual uh, with, the right, with the right philosophy of what we were doing, that we were, we were doing something that was important for the city as a whole. And uh, th th that was crucial. Another one that, you know, you mentioned the, um, uh, the team, but also the green energy uh, stuff. Mike Vaughn, our procurement agent, uh, is very uh, is very good in terms of helping us make things happen on the green energy front. Uh, Mike was the one who w went out and found us a uh, solar project out in the western part of the state that needed to be able to uh, have a public entity um, sort of wash through the net metering credits so that they take and make their money. Uh, it's a whole convoluted system that the state has for uh, promoting solar energy. We make two hundred forty thousand dollars a year uh, for the next twenty years by just processing those payments. We don't do anything. All we do is cut them a check and we get the benefit of the savings. So um, again, it was a team of people that we had, but and it was always looking for ways to do something, get some money in or, or save money going out uh, and doing it in a way that, um, in our case, with the green energy, we were big supporters of sustainable communities. and. Uh, that was that was a big part of it. And another area where you've really brought things on is in the budget itself, mm -hmm. um, by having a performance-based budget right. and, and data to be able to back up those decisions. Do you feel that that will survive the transition? I'm concerned that it will survive the transition. Uh, I'm concerned that the budget document that is really something I'm very proud of because it's a communication tool. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also a decision-making tool. For us, we used it as a process of helping us make decisions of how we went through it to put the budget together. It's helpful for the city council to be able to get all that information and in making their decisions. Hopefully, they're looking at that. And for the residents to be able to look and see, well, this is how that or this is how that department's organized, this is what that department does, this is what that department has achieved, and this is how much money they spend. Mm -hmm. uh, it isn't just the money being spent, it's what you're getting as a result of that. Right. So I'm very uh, big on that. Uh, the data, again, I think that goes to the point of operating like a business. You make decisions based on information, and you don't make it on anecdote, and you don't make it on who who is benefiting. You make it on what's happening and how we're making ourselves operate more effectively. And uh, I, I'm hopeful that that survives. We've got Connor Baldwin is fabulous with our data. Right I now. think he'll survive uh, because I think the people will demand it and the city council will have to <coughs> demand it from the next administration that this is the standard we, we want. Yeah. So, you know, as soon as the people <coughs> say, I'm not satisfied, I'm not going backward with the information you provide me, I want to go forward, wow. the city council will have to react to it. Mm -hmm. It's my opinion. People anyway. understand that data-driven decisions is what makes us more efficient and able to make those important uh, cuts in the budget or, or kind of be able to look at 
continuing to be financially he healthy and fiscally um, sound. We're going to take a break, but I think that uh, I'd like to hear more about your accomplishments and maybe kind of looking ahead, mm -hmm. uh, maybe what didn't get accomplished. So sure. we'll be back in just a moment. Thank you.